Today is a day I have been looking forward to for a very long time. I'm about to drive an extremely special boat that very few people have had the chance to drive before. So let's have a look at behind me. We can see there's a tent there. It's keeping it all nice and protected because to be honest, in this weather, it's just above freezing. We're down on the Solent. It's not quite the weather it was built for, but as you'll see in a minute, you'll soon understand why. Let's go and take a look to see what's waiting. This is the Aston Martin AM37. When I started my career as a journalist many years ago, I got to drive my first Aston Martin. It was a Virage Vantage, a huge beast of a car. And now, 25 years later, I'm about to drive something even more special. It's not just my first Aston Martin boat, it is the first Aston Martin boat. Let's go and take a look at it. This is the moment I finally get to drive the AM37. We're out on the Solent, clear room ahead, engage those 520 horsepower Mercury's of V8 engines, nice little bit of a kick, and now let's go for it. Immediately, the surge of power, the bow picks up, takes a little time for all that 1,000 horsepower get in to the water itself, but now the hull is starting to drop onto the plane. We've got a twin step carbon fibre hull, and now it's really beginning to pick up. We're doing 30 knots, 4,000 RPM, and there's a sudden little burst of speed as it drops onto the second step, flattens out, and now we're really beginning to motor. It's exactly what you'd expect of an Aston Martin. It's not an out and out race boat, it's a GT cruiser. So it's quick, it's powerful, but it's also really nice and stable, smooth ride. Now let's see how it handles. Let's put it into a turn. Oh yeah, it's just cut straight into it. You can feel the back end sliding about just a little bit. But it's kind of reassuring, it's not biting or feels like it's going to slip out. It just slides much like a sports car would really. Got this beautiful view with a double curvature, single piece windscreen, a little bit of distortion down at the bottom. But it's a really evocative view. And looking back over the stern, it looks even better. Got this beautiful slight curvature of the teak as it runs down into the sea. And the amazing thing is that you just very quickly get used to running. I mean, we're doing over 41, 42 knots now, and it feels like it's just cantering along. Got a nice deep V hull, carbon fibre, very rigid structure, but it just rides in a very easy, relaxed manner. As with any Aston Martin, an awful lot of the appeal is in the detail. And it has to be said that the detailing on board this boat is exquisite. There is this beautiful carbon fibre work that you can see all around the cockpit. The leathers themselves, really high quality, beautiful stitching here. The finish is absolutely exquisite and it, it doesn't really feel like any other boat I've been on. Everything about it is unique. Uh, whether that's the finish itself or the little details like the hatch that glides across electrically. Over on the starboard side there is a champagne cooler again that whirs out electrically. We've got these beautiful little grab handles again rather than just a stainless steel grab handle it's this lovely chunky saddle leather. You've got these again Aston Martin 
style leather side panels down here, all branded up with a little Aston Martin logo. And like everything else on this boat, it is a completely bespoke dash. So you've got these gorgeous bespoke throttles. You've got the control for the, well, it will be the stern drives and the bow thruster so that you can just maneuver in using that. You've got a fingerprint recognition so you can lock people out, uh, whether that's just wanting, not wanting your kids to play with things or whether you want to use it as security for the boat itself. Uh, there will be, on the finished production version, there'll be starter buttons rather than keys. The dash itself is all electronic, all integrated. This absolutely beautiful helm wheel with a little cut-off base, again, very much like a sports car. And even the navigation panel is completely bespoke, built in to this beautiful carbon fibre curved part of the instrument panel. You can choose what navigation system you have behind it, but it's all integrated so that it feels like one proper Aston Martin boat, not a collection of different bits and pieces that have been put onto it. It all goes into making a boat that feels completely different to any other boat on the market at the moment. I think it's safe to say that this is also the first Aston Martin that you can actually sleep on board. So you have got this little small dinette area, but it converts into a berth when you need it. And over on the starboard side, there is a small heads compartment. Clearly, this is not a boat that's built for accommodation. It is fairly tight down here. There's not quite full standing headroom, but there's everything you need, certainly for day or occasional overnighting. And as you'd expect, the quality and the finish is exceptional. There's this beautiful high gloss table. Again, you've got the Aston Martin logo set into it. The leather is as soft and comfortable as you'd find in any Aston Martin car. You've got the big screen TV, very nice recessed lighting, beautiful soft Alcantara style lining. It's not big, but as you'd expect, it is beautifully formed. And this is the business end of the AM37. This model is the S model with a pair of 520 horsepower Mercury racing naturally aspirated V8 engines linked to Bravo XR3 drives. And in this spec, it's good for 50 knots. But if you want the diesel version, you can get it. Again, it's the Mercury diesel engines with 370 horsepower apiece, which is still good for around 44, 45 knots. It's not just the engines down here. There's a whole load of clever tricks tucked away in the stern section of the boat. We've already seen how this hardtop bimini comes up and folds into place. But the other unique feature is a three section carbon fiber cockpit panel that when you put the boat away at the end of the evening, all slides across. So you, there are three panels tucked in there. You can't see them all, but they're all just layered in under the engine cover. And then this whole seat section gradually drops down, which we should be able to demonstrate to you now. So the whole of this cockpit is now gradually dropping down lower into the boat so that these panels can then slide up tracks either side, perfectly covering the whole of the cockpit. So all of this will be automated. The seats go down, the helm position goes down, the carbon fiber panels slide into place, and then you've got a perfectly weatherproof, secure boat. So we've just come back from an extensive sea trial out on the Solent. And what have we learned about the AM37? Well, this is still the prototype boat, but it's very clear, even from this, that it looks and feels and performs exactly as you'd hope of an Aston Martin. It's a very comfortable hull. It's got plenty of performance. This has got the 520 horsepower petrol engines in, and it did deliver the 50 knots they promised. There are also some beautiful features about it. There's a lot of this electronic gizmos in here, but they do work very nicely. You've got the, the, the hardtop canopy, you've got the cockpit cover, you've got the extending bathing platform, and it all comes together and feels very special. There is a, an entry level version, as far as that can be an entry level, at 1.2 million, but specced up like this, with all the gizmos and the powerful petrol engines, it's a 1.6 million pound boat. Is it worth that much? That's for you to decide. But I can tell you that it feels very special and very different to every other boat we've driven so far.